multiplying decimals. Here we're given the problem 6 and 8 tenths times 7 and 2 tenths. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find an estimate for that product. We'll look at the whole number, nearest whole number that each of those factors goes towards. 6 and 8 tenths is closest to 7, and 7 and 2 tenths is also closest to 7, and we multiply those together to get 49. So we know our answer should be somewhere around 49. Now we work with our multiplication problem involving our decimals, but we ignore that decimal places. So we'll start with the 2 there, and 2 times 8 is 16. 6, regroup the 1. 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 1, which is 13. And when I'm working with that second digit here, this 7, we're ignoring the decimal place for now, so this is worth 70. And then so when we're multiplying that there, we have to place that 0. I'll remember to cross out my regroups. 7 times 8 is 56. 6, regroup the 5. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 5 is 47. I add those two numbers together. 6, 9, 8, 4. Is my answer 4896? No, I have to place a decimal point still. My answer should be around 49, so my decimal place goes right here in between the 8 and the 9. Another way to look at this is that since there are two decimal places within our product here, there's one decimal place with 6.8, and there's one decimal place with 7.2, one tenths place here, one tenths place here, so there are two decimal places here in this product, so there are two decimal places within our answer here. I think you're ready to try one. Again, ignore the decimal place as you're multiplying 57 times 24, and our estimate over here, I'll set that up for you, should help you figure out as to where to put that decimal point. Hit pause. Continuing, so 57 times 24, ignore the decimal points for now. 4 times 7 is 28, 8, regroup the 2, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22, place a 0, because they're working with that second digit now, that 2 would be worth 20, that's why we place a 0. 2 times 7 is 14, where I will go ahead and place the 4 and regroup the 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, and I go ahead and add those two numbers together. 8, 6, 3, and 1. 12, 1, 3, 6, 8. 12, 13, place my decimal point. There's one decimal place here, one decimal place here. There are two decimal places within this product. That's why there, in our answer, there are two decimal places. Showing you two ways as to why it is and how it is that we can place that decimal point. So our answer, 5.7 times 2.4 is 13.68. I have this product here of 6 and 25 hundredths times 3 and 1 tenth. You'll notice that I have two decimal places here within that first factor, and I have one decimal place here within my second factor. So within my answer, how many decimal places am I going to have? Right, three of them. So again, as I'm working that product, I am ignoring those decimal places for now, 625 times 1 will be 625. 625 times this 3 here, I have to place a 0 because that 3 would be worth 30. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 regroup the 1. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And 3 times 6 is 18. If I add those two together carefully, I'd come up with this answer here. And then I just have to place my decimal point. How many decimal places did I say was within this whole question here. There were how many? Right, three. So there are three decimal places within my answer. And to have three decimal places, I count. One, 
2, and 3. So counting again, I go from 1, 2, and 3. I start from the furthest to the right, and I go 1, 2, and 3. So that's called placing your decimal point. Again, if you're more comfortable with having that estimate, our estimate would have been 6 times 3 for those whole numbers, which is 18. And then so we had two places here. That's why we have two whole numbers right there as well. That also could be our check, so that we make sure that we place our decimal point within the correct spot. That'll be a big part of multiplying decimals. Let's go ahead and work this problem here. We have 6 and 53 hundredths times 3 and 6 tenths, and it is your turn to work this problem. So go ahead and set this up and solve it. Hit pause. All right, welcome back. We're going to ignore the decimal places, so we have 653 times 36, and then we'll come back and we'll place our decimal points. Did you come up with this number as your first part of your problem? Did you come up with this number? Did you come up with 3918? For the 3 there, that's worth 30, that's why you place the 0. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 5 is 15, 5, regroup the 1. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 1 is 19. And then what do I do with those two numbers? Right, I add them. Did you have that second number correct for that product, 653 times 30? It'd be a shame at this point, after all this work that we've done to add these incorrectly. So I'll carefully add them. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 9 is 13. 3, regroup the 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Now I have to place my decimal point. For this first factor within our problem, we have two decimal places. For this second factor, we have one decimal place. So, all together, we have three decimal places. Going from right to left, that'd be 1, 2, and 3. So I place my decimal point right here, so that I have three decimal places within my answer. This does make sense, this is my check, as six and fifty-three hundredths would go to seven, and I could put three and six tenths to four. Seven times four is twenty-eight. I know that this is pretty far away from twenty-three, but it is just to, so I know that my decimal point is in the correct spot, and it makes sense as I went up or both of those, that this estimate would be higher than the 23 and 508 thousandths. So remember, when you are working with this here, 6.23 times 2.5, you ignore the decimal points to begin with. You can go ahead and find, and by rounding each of those, as to what your answer should be around for placing that decimal point. And then finally, you can go ahead and figure out that product, 623 times 25, and do so carefully. So there's that first step. I remember to cross out my regroups. And then when I'm working with that 2, that 2 is worth 20, so I have to place a what? Right, 0. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 6 is 12, where I go s place by place. Add those two numbers together carefully. And lastly, I have to do what? Right, place my decimal point. 18, okay. So I now think my decimal point goes right here. I'll count the number of decimal places, and my answer I have 1, 2, and 3. In my original problem, I had 1, 2, and 3. So I have the correct number of decimal places. I have placed that decimal point correctly, and that's how we multiply decimals.